With today's beginner's guide for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, we are hitting a landmark in this series that will actually be 20 videos that are now completed. So at the moment it's 38 characters in the game, so I'm just over the halfway mark that is until the DLC comes out and even more characters come out, but we are getting there. Now because this is a landmark video, I don't normally do this, but I'm just going to put it in at the start. If you're enjoying this series, please take the time to hit the like button, leave a comment below to help drive engagement, and if you're enjoying the videos and you aren't yet subscribed, feel free to do that as well. But for tonight's video, we will have a look at Elsa Bloodstone, a character I've actually had a, a fair amount of requests for. So in the video, we start off by checking out an overview in her stats. Well, I'll look at her abilities next, we'll then check out the team bonuses, next up it's the synergy attacks, we'll then talk about the build options available in the best ISO 8 to use, we'll have a look at her alternative costume and then we'll finish up with a quick summary. So we'll start off with the general overview. When we look at the various different types of characters that are in the game and the attacks that are available to them, there's not a great deal of characters that could almost be classed as pure range characters and that is a playstyle that personally I prefer. I like to stay back and try and be tactical and just pick off the enemy. Now with Elsa, with the exception of one move which I wouldn't recommend you actually use, and I'll talk about that during the abilities section, she can be played full range and she's got decent range on her, she's not up there with the legs of Hawkeye who's incredible and he can almost snipe enemies from any distance but she does have some really decent range which in turns means she can have some nice survivability. Now when we look at her abilities we have a mixture of the projectile and also the melee tag but the one skill that's got the melee tag is one that we're not really going to use and again I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. She doesn't have any hero traits unfortunately so nothing there. When we look at her stats they are on the lower side. Her strength is C Vitality is an F, but that's not really a problem because you will be staying at range. Mastery is an F, Resilience is a D, Durability is a D, and Energy is a B. So the Energy helps out there to keep our attacks going. And as mentioned, you really want to stay at range when you're playing her due to the fact she is really quite squishy. But that's the overview. Let's now have a look at her abilities. first ability we have here is Fully Stocked, and this is one I don't actually use at all for two reasons. One, as you can see that it's only got the melee tag on it, so it means if you want to actually get increased damage on this, you need to change how you actually itemise for her in regards to all the other skills, and it'll pull your overall damage down. And two, it just doesn't feel that good to actually use. You have to be within melee range, which you don't want to be, due to her low vitality, and I find a lot of times after you do the initial attack, and you jump up, the follow-up attack in the air will actually miss, so this is a skill that I would just say, just avoid altogether. The next ability you unlock really is pretty awesome, this is called Shotgun Blast, so you can choose to charge this down, or you could just tap the button, if you charge it you'll get roughly 25% more damage, and the projectile will go further. Now with this, and you actually notice this when you're playing else, and it doesn't apply to all ranged characters, projectiles actually pierce so it means you can do a fair amount of damage you can see charge this is hitting for 25,000 and it actually has a, a slight AOE on it and then it will hit a few characters in the line and it pierces all the way through them so you can really do considerable damage with this on either minions elites or even bosses as well the next ability we have here is Double Barrel, and in a lot of ways this is actually very similar to Shotgun Blast, the difference being that Shotgun Blast is slower and hits harder, this one doesn't hit as much, but it's a much faster attack, it does also pierce like Shotgun Blast as well, so try and line up the enemies before you fire this off. Now, they are very similar skills, but because this has got the Rapid Fire Synergy trait, this is one if you're maybe running Cap or Black Panther or Colossus, and they've got their safeguard up, then fire this off and the bullets will ricochet off. Off them. And we all know that Ricochet in the game is absolutely amazing. The final ability is your standard trash clearing skill. This is nice for taking out minions if you are surrounded. So this is called Bullet Bombardment. Now you'll notice it has two tags, which I don't believe I've seen before. So it's got projectile and melee. Did actually try stacking some strength eyes so to see if the damage actually double dip due to the fact she's got double tags but it doesn't unfortunately, so when it comes to the actual build sections, we won't be using strength ISOs. If it did double dip in the damage, then we would definitely be using them. It would be 
pretty amazing if that was the case. Now, that's all the abilities. Before we do move on to the next section, I'll just mention about her light and heavy attack. So the light attack, if you get to the end of the combo, then it actually pierces and it has a slight AoE on it. In regards to the heavy attack, this has got an AoE and it hits really pretty hard as well. It doesn't pierce, but it is a really nice attack. Now, the next section will be the team bonuses. For the team bonus section here, we really do have a fair amount going on due to the fact that Elsa is part of seven different teams. So it's Femme Fatales, Anti-Heroes, Midnight Suns, Ultimate Alliance 3, Women of Marvel, Wisecracking Warriors, and then finally Sharpshooters. Now, due to her being part of so many teams, there's quite a lot of characters with this overlap here. Now, the notable ones, and these are the ones where they overlap over to three different teams. It would be Black Widow, Gamora, Elektra, and also Scarlet Witch. So you can get some pretty nice team bonuses if you run Elsa alongside those characters. There's quite a few too, so many in fact that I won't actually list them. But this is all of them here. So let's now have a look at the synergies. When it comes to the synergy attacks, then there's only two synergy traits available, and that would be Bash and Rapid Fire. Thankfully, Rapid Fire can generate the awesome Ricochet. Now, despite the fact she only has two synergy traits, she's actually not that low in regards to the total number of synergies she can do over the entire roster. She comes in around about middle of the roster. She's not in the bottom ten or anything like that. Now, if we look at the top five characters that she synergizes very well with, we've got Crystal up at the top, we've then got Star-Lord, Wasp, Ghost Rider, and then Loki. The bottom five, and these are characters you genuinely want to avoid if you're looking to do an actual Infinity Trail where you need to get a set amount of synergy damage. It's Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Psylocke, Thanos, and also Scarlet Witch as well. So we did mention Scarlet Witch in the last section, the team bonus one, where she was part of three different teams, meaning you can get a nice percentage out of her. But despite that, I would recommend against running her with Scarlet Witch due to the fact she's the bottom character for synergies here. But this is all the synergies. Let's now have a look at the build option that's available. Build option wise then for Elsa it really is nice and simple because she has a relatively simple character. It's all about just doing range damage. We completely ignore the, the fully stocked skill, reason being that, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I just don't feel that it's worth the trade-off getting within melee damage to use it, and a lot of times when you use it, it actually misses, so that means we can go straight for projectile damage, meaning we can actually ramp our numbers up higher. So for this build, you would want to go for increasing the damage of projectile attacks by 19.2%, Increase crit chance of projectile attacks by 11.1. Until you actually get them, then you would get by by using increased crit hit chance by 8%. That's just a flat amount. And also flat damage. So increased damage done to enemies by 16.5%. So nice and simple, but that's a setup that personally I would run with her. Let's now have a look at her alternative costume. The alternative costume for Elsa at the moment is just a simple recolouring. This is unlocked via the Lambda Infinity Rift. You need to get 25 stars, so that should be nice and easy. Now, because she doesn't have any special costume to show off, what I'm going to do going forward in these videos when the character doesn't have their, their second proper costume yet, I'll do a bit of speculation and I'll let you know what I would like to see. So this one you can see on screen at the moment, this is from a run I believe called Monsters Unleashed and it's also available in Marvel Future Fight. This is one I would really like to see on her, I like the, the more up to date look. But let's now just finish up with a quick summary. Elsa then I would say more than any other character I've actually reviewed so far is the, the definition of getting the job done without actually really looking flashy at all or attacks just given the fact you just found pistols or rifles there's not a great deal they can actually do there but as mentioned she does get the job done the fact that she can be used fully ranged means that for some of the harder stages we are not up against a, a time limit and you can just stay back and you can just snipe characters with her I don't think she's 
up there with the likes of Hawkeye. I prefer him as the ultimate sniping character, but Elsa is definitely one that does have her uses in that respect as well. So let me know in the comments below, as always, if you're playing Elsa, how you're getting on with her, what build you're actually running with her, and what skills you're using. And if you enjoyed the video, take the time to hit the like button, the share button, leave a comment below, and really thanks for tuning in once again, and I'll see you all again soon.